Search is one of the things that we do so often that it's easy to lose some of the magic of it. The internet has gotten so huge. There's billions of web pages that are part of the World Wide Web. And yet we can search them so easily, so easily now that search engines like Google are actually doing live search. That's actually interactive. That's how fast they can return results. So let's just take a moment, pause, and try to use a little bit of our intuition to see how this works. So I just search, I'm gonna do this again for your benefit. Um, well, let's look for dogs. I search for dogs, look at that, boom. The, uh, the top bar up here points out that that term returns about 771 billion results. And that search took about 410 milliseconds, so less than half a second. It's incredible, right? Um, but let's use our intuition to try to kind of understand what's going on. So first of all, there is no way that Google searched all 771 billion, or, or well, actually, obviously, there's more than 771 billion pages that it had to search. Maybe there's like a trillion, maybe several trillion web pages that Google is searching for this result. There's no way that they did that in half a second. So clearly there's some type of pre-computation. There's something that Google is doing to prepare itself to answer questions like this. Not just dogs, dogs and cats, whatever. So that's, that's pretty clear just from the performance of search. There is no way that Google has a whole copy of the internet sitting there and when you ask it to look for dogs, it's like, okay, here we go. Let's look at this page. No, 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 that's not how it works. It's ready. So there's some type of data structure, there's some pre-computation that's being done, and there's some very efficient data structure that's allowing it to answer that query in less than a half a second. Look at all the different types of information that, that it has to return and think about. So there are websites, right? This was sort of the original Google. I have plenty of different links I can click on. Um, there's information about caring for dogs. There's you know, encyclopedic information like Wikipedia, some of that encyclopedic information is now actually being displayed by Google as part of the search results, which is super interesting and I think really useful. So I can figure out, you know, what the scientific name for a dog is, Canis lupus familiaris. Um, there are news articles that are appearing in the search, uh, sort of about a little bit a little bit farther down, and that's pretty interesting. I certainly want my dog to live longer. There's an article about something you can give it to help it live longer. Um, there are websites that are named after animals, dog.com. Where else would you go to get supplies for your dog? Um, and so there are, you know, again, there are Nova articles about dog sense of smell. Um, and then down here we have all this information about related searches. So this might be helpful if I'm doing, doing searches. So, you know, just the volume of information that's out there on the internet is really apparent when you search for common search terms like this. I mean, this is clearly just the tip of 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 the iceberg in terms of all the information that's out there about dogs. So one really interesting question, of course, the performance of search is super important. How do I search the entire internet, find things that are relevant and return them? But the other question is, how do I decide what that tippity 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 top is? There are maybe 10 links, maybe 12 or 15 links that appear on this page. There are 771 billion results. Figuring out what belongs here is really difficult. It's also super important because if you're wrong, then I've got to sit here and I've got to start to click on these O's down here and keep going, um, and, and that's really tedious. A lot of us expect today that the top results and interesting things are going to be on the first page, and in a lot of cases, people didn't even click on the second page of, of Google results at all. So next time you do a search, or maybe the next 10 or 100 times you do a search, look at some of this and just think about what just happened. Think about you know, how incredible it is that we have all this information at our fingertips the fact that search is so fast, the fact that search results are so useful um, is really pretty incredible and is a really important part of what makes the internet so wonderful and what makes the internet so transformational and why it's changing pretty much everything around us. All that information can be out there. You can't find it, it's not that useful.